Good morning, Lakers. In this episode of Morning Minutes, we're going to take a few uh, ticks of the clock to talk about email etiquette. This is a skill that will be developed over the course of your career as a professional, as a student, and especially while we're on distance learning. And so I get a lot of emails myself from you guys, and I know that some of you are probably better at email than others. And we're gonna go through a few key tips to help you become a better emailer and being able to represent yourself professionally, both with your teachers, with potentially colleges or future employers, with coworkers, clients. These skills will be skills that you'll use for quite a while until the next best thing uh, apart from email comes up. Maybe there's gonna be some sort of mind reading app that we can use, but until then, email is a pretty ingrained part of our society. And there's some, some etiquette that we need to understand. And so we're gonna take just a second to go through those. So you'll see me talk our way through some of the presentation and I look forward to sharing a few of these tips and also seeing you use them um, as we practice this uh, in our distance learning as well as when you email me. Let's start quickly with just defining what etiquette is. So etiquette is an old fashioned word. You used to see it around the dinner table with the fork on the left and whatever else. And etiquette really is just more about expectations and what you're gonna be expected to do to present yourself in a flattering way. First things first, you need to consider who you're emailing. Are you emailing a boss, a teacher, maybe a friend, an acquaintance? That's gonna depend on your approach. Your words are gonna change depending on who you're reaching out to. You're probably gonna be a little more professional reaching out to a boss or a teacher. When you're a friend, you might be approaching in a little bit more of a casual way. A few of these things might be a little bit common sense, but I do wanna actually just take a second and start with just what comprises an email. And so on the screen, what you'll see is you'll see the top part and that has your address or the recipient who you're sending it to. You might not know what CC or BCC is. It actually goes back to the old days when papers used to be sent out in memo format and there is little things in the back that would copy what you wrote. CC means carbon copy. And so that's gonna be like, if you're mentioning somebody else, if you're saying, hey, Mr. Reem, so-and-so teacher said I could be their TA. You're gonna maybe wanna CC them so they get a copy of that email so they know that you're being uh, asking about their their program or their class they will know that you have CC them BCC or blind carbon copy does the same thing with the exception of the blind carbon copy recipients will not receive who else was sent okay and the recipient will not know that it was BCC to somebody else okay so that's good if you're going to potentially send it to someone but you don't want to know that they were included the sender is clearly you, that's your email address. The subject line is an important piece because that's usually the first part of the email that we're gonna notice. If you leave a subject line blank or you write your entire email in the subject line, that's kind of a problem and not super professional. You have the body right below that and it usually starts with a salutation which would be like, hey Mr. Reem, hi Mr. Reem, dear so and so. The, what you're asking about, the body, and then the closing. And that's usually just adding your name or saying thank you or something like that. Okay, that's what the, the elements of a professional email are. This bit won't actually be as important while you're at school, but once you graduate, you're gonna be having to be creating your own email address. And you might have one already, say through Gmail or Yahoo. You wanna create a professional email as well. You don't want you know, something that's gonna be questionable being sent on resumes or in profiles or in college applications or scholarships. So create one that's, you know, the best approach is really looking at your name, maybe a number if your name's already taken, and that's it. Use something that's identifiable to you as well as professional. It's always suggested to actually open your email with what's called, again, a salutation. That's a dear Mr. Reem, dear Miss Mitchell. That just is a nice professional way to actually open up your email and introduce yourself. So please make sure you're adding that. Don't just start with like railing into what you want. It's kind of like stopping someone on the street or in the hallway and just saying, Mr. Reem, I need to change my schedule. Introduce yourself, say hi, how's your day? Things like that is a very professional way to approach the beginning of an email. We'll cover this a little bit later in the, in the presentation video, but tone is very hard to express over email, okay? When you add sarcasm or emojis, a lot of times they can be misunderstood. 
because you don't have the body language associated with the email, the smile, the playful, you know, how, you, how your body's held. Um, that can be a very confusing thing that oftentimes will end you, end up, more often not, end up in hot water than be helpful. So it's best to maybe just avoid it. Assume that you're potentially gonna be misunderstood and maybe edit your email appropriately. This one's actually pretty tough sometimes because sometimes you are angry and sometimes you're frustrated or annoyed and any of those things I would substitute with the word angry because many times it's it's difficult to express emotions over these emails. And sometimes when we, we are frustrated or angry, we send an email without thinking. And I'm definitely guilty of this. Most adults are, most kids are as well. And one thing that I would advise is to take a pause. If you feel like you're writing something out of frustration, if you're angry with a teacher or me or anybody else, maybe write a draft using some of these tips, but then pause, save it in your draft and maybe come back in a couple hours after you've had a chance to think, maybe cool off or even the next day. And many times what you'll reread, you can edit that and change it to be a more appropriate and more receivable response, which will help you in the long run. An angry email generally doesn't result in great end product. This is very common as well that we see is some very general or generic emails. If you're asking about something in particular, please be specific with it. The example you see on the screen says, today in class you handed back my paper. Keep in mind your teachers have at least five or six classes and hundreds of students and tons of papers and assignments. Please try to be specific. Today in your first period biology class, you handed back my lab report, blah, blah, blah. Okay, be specific about the, the context of what you're asking for. Don't assume people automatically know just because they see your name. As you get older in high school, I tend to see a little bit more proofreading happening in your emails. But still, we get emails that are poorly written, low sentence structure, very little punctuation, maybe no capitalization, oftentimes looking maybe like a text message. And a key thing to know about email is emails are not text messages. They're not texts to your friends or your family. Please make sure that you do write in complete sentences. It helps us to understand and it helps whoever you're communicating with to understand what your request is, which ultimately helps you in the end. So please use the, all those different English and grammatical tools as you're writing your emails to different adults. This one might be a little harder to, to grasp a little bit, but ultimately what you're trying to compare, this idea of high and low register. Register is a part of singing and in instruments and that kind of stuff. And But ultimately in this context, what you're looking at is who are you talking to? And it goes back to that knowing who your audience is. The higher register is gonna be someone who maybe has more authority. Superior is not necessarily a word that's used as much today. It has a negative connotation sometimes, but a boss or a teacher or a parent or someone who is older than you many times. The lower register is more of an acquaintance, a, a friend, a family member who you have an existing relationship with that goes outside of the professional sphere many times. So just knowing that who you're talking to, be aware of your register, be aware of how you're coming across in that written language. A great psychological tool that you can use when you're eventually maybe having to write an uh, email that has some negative connotation to it. So maybe a complaint or a concern that you have, and maybe you are feeling frustrated or angry. Many times that maybe needs to be expressed. However, if you're gonna do that in an email, a psychological tip that you can use to help that land appropriately is what's called the flattery sandwich or compliment sandwich. And ultimately what that looks like is if you start your email with a compliment, say, hey, Mr. So-and-so, your class is great. I'm really enjoying the videos that you're putting up on Google Meet. I love that it's engaging and you, you provide a lot of tools. However, I realized that I haven't gotten my grade or test back with feedback. And I was hoping that you can get that. Once again, thank you so much for the energy. I can tell that you're putting a lot of time and energy into this class. And I, I hope that we can maybe get that feedback back as soon as possible. That would be an example of a flattery sandwich where you start with something positive, you put in the complaint or the request in the middle of that, and then you bring it back and end it positively. It helps people to understand that you care about them and you're not just making a flippant requ request of them, but that you value them as a person. In conclusion, the last thing that you really need to remember is that ultimately at the end of the day, your emails are gonna reflect on you. 
and what I'm hoping that you get out of this is that you can use a few simple tips to make that reflection as positive as possible. It's gonna help you in the long run, whether it's from the career side of things, your college and career aspects, your social emotional stuff, so how you're interacting with people. The same tools can oftentimes be actually translated into the verbal communication uh, method as well. But ultimately, when you email someone, if you follow some of these simple tips, you're gonna get the best results and have the best style of communication.